wonderful person, this is Anton, and today you're going to be using the Kerbal Space Program like we did so many years ago and try to learn a little bit more about space sciences and specifically, as you probably were able to tell from the title, we're actually going to be focusing on Space Sciences 101. Anyway, let me explain this in more detail and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this actually is a kind of a request from one of the uh, real life friends who does like to watch my videos but doesn't always understand everything that I'm trying to teach about space sciences because as I realized not actually uh, not everyone knows uh, you know a lot about space or rockets or how to launch rockets or where and how things work outside of earth. If you do understand these concepts you actually should be really proud of yourself because you're already like ahead of 95% of population, if not more. Now, today we're going to be using uh, this beautiful game Kerbal Space Program that I probably used for like 500, 600 hours um, back two or three years ago when I started making these videos. And we're going to actually answer a very simple question. And the question is this, how do rockets actually stay in space? You know, why don't they Kind of come back why do they why don't they fall and why can't we launch rockets much easier back in the days actually when i was still in early college before i even understood how uh orbital dynamics work i was under the impression that you can just kind of launch a balloon into space and somehow use that technology to create cheap space travel i think many people actually get to the point of their life when they actually start thinking that way and i mean admittedly i was already pretty old i should have known better but what can you do? I guess I wasn't the smartest kid in the world. And also at the same time, uh, this was still early in my own educational development and uh, just after high school. Obviously, as I started reading, I realized things weren't so simple. And let me show you visually what I mean by this. So we're going to we're going to do this uh, experimentally. We're going to basically pretend this is that balloon and we're going to launch this rocket. I lost my voice for a second there. We're going to launch this rocket into space directly up as if it was a balloon basically we're just going to launch it into space and see what happens so um elon musk actually once said that it's very very easy to get into space it's easy to get to space itself but it's very difficult to stay there and you'll find out in a second why so this is a common misconception rockets fly straight up common misconception number one a common misconception number two you're going to see in a few seconds as we go up higher and higher in space oh by the way if you never played Kerbal space program check this game out it's one of the best space games out there i posted the link for this in the description below it's uh one of those games that teaches you about math and science and life in general as you play through it and i really really love this game i've used it for countless hours as i mentioned there's over a hundred videos i made in the past anything from history of um space to essentially um, several experimental analyses that I did with this game, including things like um, orbital dynamics. But anyway, so we're about to reach space. You can see stars already. And you'll see or you'll hear space as soon as mi music kicks in. Space in Kerbal Space Program occurs at 70 kilometers in altitude. And there you go. We're now at 70 kilometers. We're going up at uh, approximately 1.6 kilometers per second and basically we're going up so we are in space now most people think that this is how you get to space and this is how you stay in space so we're going to assume we're most people and we're going to release our capsule and there we go that's our beautiful capsule our pilot uh mr jebediah kerman is on board right now he's very happy we can actually look at him he's somewhere inside oh no this is his view uh, yeah this is his view we don't really want to see that we can totally actually take him outside for a walk and he's like hey look at me i'm the first astronaut and uh, honestly uh, back in the 50s uh, when we just started exploring the idea of orbital space flight this is how people thought it's done they actually were under the impression that you can totally stay in space by just doing this and as you can probably tell from the title of this video and from me kind of hinting on things that is not how you do things in space and let's find out why we're going to where's my b button we're going to board uh, the spacecraft and we're going to advance time and just watch what happens so we're going to basically advance time and as our speed drops we kind of realize that now we're 
just kind of up there but now we're coming down because you know what comes up must come down so now we're going to be dropping from space we got to space we got pretty high up actually as a matter of fact we were at the altitude of uh 340 kilometers which is pretty high for Kerbin. but now things are not looking so good for us because we are dropping from space and this is why as elon musk once said it is actually a lot more challenging to stay in space than it is to reach it and so our balloon experiment is about to turn for the worse because we are now dropping and luckily we brought a parachute i totally remember to put a parachute this time i forgot many many times in my previous videos uh okay things are gonna start exploding because uh right now we're dropping at a pretty fast speed there's a lot of air friction and we're going down pretty fast so grab that carbon let's rethink this strategy let's actually accelerate time land and rethink this strategy one more time oh and by the way we might as well release the parachutes and as we're landing on the side of the mountain here and there we go let's get our capsule and i guess we just have to uh think this over again so what are we going to do jebediah kerman what are we going to do well how about we actually go back to the uh like 18th century when newton discovered the idea of gravity and here there's actually a pretty cool um simulation i found very recently that kind of shows you a little bit about so-called newton's cannon and being newton you know he actually thought well what if we launch this even faster what if we launch it at such a speed that basically it starts moving around earth uh at the speed uh, where it never really reaches earth now i actually fired a little bit too fast because i thought this was a real earth apparently it's not apparently this is fake earth so let's do it uh, a little bit slower and so there's a speed here also known as escape velocity where the cannonball is falling just as fast as it's approaching earth and so it essentially enters what's known as the orbit and this is essentially that particular orbit right now now it's not a perfectly circular orbit but this is exactly what the early uh, rocket scientists did they basically discovered this concept and realized that if you go fast enough in space oh i just hit my cannon if you go fast enough you can actually stay in space pretty much indefinitely so Jebediah Kerman, let's go back to the planning board, let's go back to uh, the vehicle assembly and make a slightly different rocket, maybe a slightly bigger rocket. A rocket that still kind of looks pretty simple, but this time has an additional stage that will now uh, kind of try to get us into that orbit, that cannonball-like trajectory. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, it's actually not as hard as you think. Well. In Kerbal Space Program, there's obviously different techniques, but we're going to follow a more realistic approach as they do with actual rockets. So here, first of all, we're going to be watching our velocity, making sure that we don't go too fast because otherwise you're going to be losing too much energy. But we're going to launch our rocket and pretty much as soon as we get to a certain point, maybe under one kilometer, we're going to start turning a little bit. We're going to start turning, well, east in this case. We're going to start turning east and this is what we call a gravity turn a gravity turn is very very important because it allows you to save energy or save fuel from not wasting too much on essentially gravity so gravity here uh, is something we're fighting against but as you start turning sideways you don't have to fight it as much anymore and so here we're actually going to start decreasing speed as well we don't want to go too fast we're basically um entering a kind of a elliptical orbit so basically it's no longer a straight line it's going to be turning into a uh, very kind of a parabolic like shape and eventually turn into an ellipse so we're still going a little bit too fast might slow down a little bit and we're about to run out of our first stage fuel and at this point we're going to engage our second stage right around now and uh, so the second stage will hopefully give us just enough velocity to get into orbit. As you can see, my uh, velocity here is increasing quite dramatically. I don't want to go too fast, but this shows me, or I guess if I, if I were to actually kind of go a little bit farther away, this kind of shows you how we're, how we're moving here. We started here and now we're moving 
this way and we're trying to move that way we're trying to basically get into the that cannonball shape by moving sideways as fast as we can now on earth that speed has to be uh almost eight kilometers per second here on Kerbin, and i'm moving once again a little bit too fast here on Kerbin, that speed only has to be like just over two kilometers per second because this planet is much much smaller in size it doesn't have as much uh things happening here basically it's a smaller version of earth so uh let's get out of this uh, situation where we're actually burning too much fuel because of the air friction and at this point we can actually even stop our engines completely because we're now going to be going to space and reaching what's known as the apogee or apoapsis and that's basically the highest point of our orbit now what uh oh suddenly the music kicks in great now what um rockets usually do at this point is they circularize their orbit by firing their engines right here just like a cannonball would and basically accelerate into that speed that you need to have for you to essentially be in circular orbit and let's see if we can do that with this rocket I'm going to circularize right here and this game even tells you how much uh speed you need to have how much delta v or difference in speed you need to have to actually get there uh, luckily we have all these automatic tools as well that allow us to basically point toward our nodes and uh you don't have to worry too much about manual controls this game does provide you with a lot of hand holding so in about three minutes from now we're going to fire our engines and hopefully enter that permanent orbit so let's wait for that time to come in a few more seconds we'll hopefully be able to circularize so here we go i hope we have enough fuel left maybe not this is enough we're now in yeah that's it that's that's a perfectly acceptable orbit it's not perfectly circular because we're um our highest altitude is like 170 and the lowest altitude is like 100 but this is an orbit that will stay in uh in place for pretty much many 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 decades to come in in this game it actually means forever in real life this would be probably like 20 years or so before you actually re-enter atmosphere and this is mostly due to uh, slight air friction that you still get at this altitude but basically this is why and how and where and when rockets get to space uh, let me just actually accelerate time so you can see that we are actually in orbit we're going to run time a little bit faster and maybe even a little bit faster and here you can kind of see that we're now going to be orbiting around Kerbin, the planet in a circular orbit and this is essentially how rockets do it and this is why you need to go sideways not upwards and this is why it is kind of more challenging than just pointing things up and launching them like most people think scientists do it you need to have this very precise um, elliptical parameter or elliptical orbit and to get into the elliptical orbit you have to have a parabolic orbit at first and well anyway that's really all i wanted to show you and maybe just maybe we can even return to Corbin. let's see if we can to return to Kerbin, as you can probably imagine, you don't just fire your rocket this way. You actually have to decrease your speed. You have to point... Uh, let's go back to the rocket here. You have to point yourself away from the vector of velocity, which is called retrograde vector. And, well, I don't think I have enough fuel, but let, let's see if I do. And basically what you're doing is this. Oh, look at that. I may actually have done it. Let's, let's see for you if we're lucky enough. Oh, yeah, totally. We're going to be re-entering now, I think. Oh, no, we're not. We didn't actually reach the necessary um, perigee or periapsis, so we're still going to be in space, and unfortunately for us, we're stuck in space forever. Uh, but nevertheless, this is how you would do it, and maybe in the next video, I'll explain a little bit more about it, just like I did in the past. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to actually tell you in this video. This is kind of just an introduction slash 101 of um, orbital dynamics and space stuff and how rockets do it because I don't normally talk about this, but many people have been asking specifically my close friends because they just don't get it. And now hopefully they will. And you know who you are, by the way. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching videos about space, sciences and so on. 
And if you have any suggestions about Kerbal Space videos that you'd like to watch, post them in the comments below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.